Hello, welcome back to Arsenal Hootie Central, part two of the October updates. Let's go straight back into it. I don't know if you can see on the on the camera, but where the pillars are, I've just massaged some more toilet paper around the actual pillars. Once that's dried a little, I'm going to remove them, just so that the water blends in with the actual pillars itself and <clears throat> obviously this is quite a fast flowing river uh, so where the water builds up around the pillar uh, there's going to be some build up uh, which is why there's a raised section and then there's going to be a, a little raised section where the, the uh, impulse of water has come forward past the actual pillar which you can see on those and I filled in a little bit in there put a little water in there and obviously where the rock is that's raised up and then also at the back so they'll be highlighted <clears throat> once it's painted and varnished uh, and if need be the extra uh, Mod Podge ripples uh, I'll dry brush some kind of white foam uh, on the areas where it's raised up just to give that impression that the the water is is running past uh, the actual pillars. So once this is dried a little I'm going to remove these so that uh, the paper can dry uh, properly. I have also just uh, <coughs> filled in all the cracks with sculptor mould, or well, the cracks, the gaps, to give the impression that the rear pillar is actually built into the uh, into the rocks. So once that's dry a little, uh, I'll remove it so that I can put the aqueduct, uh, the viaduct, sorry, uh, in and out. Can't move it right now because it's too wet and it'll just pull it. But once it's dried a little <coughs> and it's a bit pliable, then I'll uh, either take a knife to it or if I catch it just in time, I'll be able to pull it out. Uh, that'll obviously have to be all weathered to blend in with the rock that's already there. So I'll do some more painting. One of the main reasons why I want these to be removable is if you see underneath, there is a radiator there. So if I ever do need to get to the radiator, this board here can pull out uh, it's not attached to the sides and also the the, the uh, viaduct at the back isn't finished so I want to be able to paint that and weather it and add on any extras that I want to <clears throat> and I don't want to be able to have to lean across all, all the time so that's the main reason so it's been around two days now and everything's nice and dry I've got the raised profile still here which I'll highlight once the varnish has gone on. Obviously when you do put the varnish on the thickness of the varnish is actually going to uh, decrease the actual size of the waves as well. I've blended in the mod, uh, the sculpt mould into the rest of the rock so that it blends nicely. So it's time to paint the riverbed uh, and what we're doing is we're getting a gradual colour from the actual uh, river bank <clears throat> lighter through to darker in the middle because that's where the deeper uh, bits are. <clears throat> deeper it is, the darker it goes. So what we've got first is some uh, burnt umber up there. And we're going to apply that around the sides of the of the river bank and going slightly up the bank so that it blends in. We're going to use a technique called uh, wet blending. I know there's people out there on the internet uh, and on YouTube, Luke Towin, etc., who uses an airbrush to blend everything together. But at the moment, I'm not proficient with using an airbrush. I've got one it's sitting up there. However, I don't want to be ruining this. Uh, and I've seen a technique called wet blending, where you keep the paint uh, slightly wet so that you can blend it all together where it goes into the darker recesses. So I'm going to crack on doing this, and you'll join me in just a jiffy, where hopefully it'll all be painted. So around the actual rocks which I've painted, because you don't want to be ruining the rocks that you've painted, I've actually got a smaller brush just to dab in 
is if you go in with a big brush, you're bound to paint over the nice rocks that you've painted. So it's just try and be as careful as you can and drag it out from the rock. <clears throat> Don't go to the rock with your paintbrush. Place your paintbrush to the rock and drag out because that way you're not going to carelessly overpaint with your hand. Now because I'm painting onto the uh, toilet paper it's still absorbing the paint quite quickly. <clears throat> so before it dries completely I'm going to get rid of the excess on this paintbrush and using the same paintbrush I've got some raw amber now which is a, a, a should be a deeper shade and using the same paintbrush so that it blends together I'm going to start applying that to the edge where we just painted for the burnt amber and you can go over the burnt amber with the raw amber and this is why it's called wet blending because the paint's all wet and you're dragging it from one to the other and blending it all together. Now you can see that it's going from a lighter to a darker colour. Uh, what I need to do now is right in the middle is just squirt some black right down the centre and then blend that out from the centre. So it's around there. You don't need too much because a little black will go a long way. Now keeping the same brush that you've been using, you can blend that out and feather it out. And once again, it just gives that impression of depth. Now I'll probably put too much on here, so I might have to blend some more uh, raw rumber in. But that's okay because it's it's the wet blending technique. So we can do that by just adding more wet, uh, more uh, raw amber to the riverbed. So you can see I've added more raw amber, and it's just a case of blending it all in together, and it merges that black and the brown and the the burnt amber all together. So hopefully from this aerial shot you'll be able to see how it's blending in uh, where the darker area is showing the deeper bits of the river. So as you can probably hear we've got the the fan heater going again. Yeah, just try and get it just to try and get it uh, dried out. Put some uh, some off pieces of the uh, woodland scene, it's rock moulds, so I've smashed them all together uh, to get some random pieces, put them down, uh, because what I want to do is try and blend in these pieces with this on here, uh, and if I was to put real stones down, you might not get the same blend, so I've used the, the plaster cast uh, pieces, and then, then filled it with some medium ballast and fine ballast to get a, a different blend. Soaked it with uh, IPA, uh, isopropyl alcohol, uh, and then with my scenic glue, my scenic spray, which is uh, just two parts or three parts glue. Sorry, three parts water, just one part PVA glue, with a little bit of uh, detergent mixed in. I've also, I put some uh, fallen rocks down there as well, so that's soaking in as well. So it's, it's a waiting game now. And we'll see what happens. Gone scavenging in the garden. Got some uh, debris which we can put into the river. There's always debris that's washed down the stream uh, and collects in places where uh, it gets trapped. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put some of these uh, twigs that we've got out of the garden, uh, put them in position, see what they look like, and see if they uh, they look good. All I'm going to do is apply these with 
uh, some uh, PVA glue. One thing to consider if you're doing this though is make sure these are all dead. Uh, these have been in the garden for years. Uh, they're not cut off the uh, off the trees or the uh, the bushes. Uh, you don't want live things going on there because they could generate uh, growth or, or mould or anything like that. So make sure the dead are all dried out. Applying the yacht varnish. Uh, the yacht varnish is a clear gloss. It provides a high uh, gloss finish. I got this from Screwfix, I think, or Tool Station, one of the two. It was about 10 quid, 12 quid, maybe, for the can. And it's a one litre can. It takes about 12 hours, it says, before you can put another coat on. So the first coat's going on. And it's just a case of giving it a good mix and then painting it on. And then you've got to clean it with uh, thinners or turps. So the coat's on. It does. It is quite wet, as you can see. And it does make the the paper underneath very wet. So you've got to be careful how you put it on. You don't want to be putting it on too thick. because It'll take ages for it to dry. But hopefully a thin layer like this uh, will dry uh, within... Uh, I'd like to think quicker than 12 hours, uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. So the first coat's on. So it's 10 past one. We'll come back to this in a little bit later, see how it's drying. But for now, we'll just give it a bit of a helping hand. We are... Just over six hours since the uh, first coat went down and the tin uh, says it's touch dry after six and that'd be right. I think he's having a good time. He's standing in a particularly deep patch there. Let's see if we can catch some fish. Good morning, the following day it is ten past nine on Friday the 19th of October. And we're going to apply some more coats of this uh, varnish. So it's been over 12 hours now, nice and hard. We're going to apply the second coat. And uh, this way we should be able to get two coats in a day. Fortunately, I'm on a rest day today. So one coat will be in the morning and one coat will be in the evening. Quarter past nine, Friday the 19th. Great model railway challenge just finished. So it's time for another coat of varnish. Now it's the following day, I've been at work and I've come back and I've realised that <clears throat> the river was too dark for what it was. So I've added some uh, burnt umber, which is here, just to muddy up the water really, rather than it being too black. Uh, and that can be painted just on top of the varnish, uh, because there's several layers of varnish still to go on this, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be building up anyway. Quarter to six on Sunday the 21st, and we're going to put another coat on. Well, it's Monday the 22nd, and it's now five to seven. And, and we're going to put another coat of varnish on. Surprise, surprise. So it's not completely finished. There are a few bits that I want to add and to complete. <clears throat> I need to fully wire up the tracks going across the bridges. I want to purchase, or at least find some reasonably priced canoes and some swans to go on the river. And some other small detailing intricacies. But if we go through what we've got, so obviously underneath, as you saw in the uh, excerpts of the previous videos, we've got the rocks. These have been uh, painted in the leopard spot technique. We've got a path which people will be able to access from the top. We've got some grass tufts, bushes, trees with the, uh, the leaf ground cover, which you can see in uh, my previous videos. Looking under the bridges path goes all the way to the bottom. We've got some river uh, debris, some twigs, more bushes, static grass. We've got some reeds, some bulrushes. I'm quite pleased how they came out really. 
that will have made. Numerous coats of varnish right on the riverbed. We've got the froth coming from the piers. Got a little cameo scene with a little fisherman with his line coming off his rod. He hasn't caught anything yet. But his, uh, you can just see his line going underneath the water. Got rocky outcrops. More river debris. We've got the rear pillars. Uh, some of them were built into rocks. I'm going to disguise some of these things with uh, with some foliage and some bushes. I've obviously still got to weather up this uh, viaduct at the back. We've got a tree. Again, all homemade with uh, sea foam and clump foliage. Not clump foliage, sorry. Yeah. Uh, this stuff calls turf again you can see underneath it's got the leaf scatter static grass and grass tufts have been placed on top of the actual scatter itself more trees and grass tufts and scatter and again river debris there's not going to be any access from this top section because this is all going to be industrial and that side is going to be more rural. Have a look from this direction. But overall, I'm very pleased how it's come out. And for the first kind of scenery, because obviously you can see the rest of the section has been untouched really. The first scenery section to be done. I'm quite, quite pleased how it's come out and I'm especially pleased how the, the rock formations have come out. I was quite worried at first when you first put the, the bold colours on the rocks with the leopard spot technique, the yellows like the ochre. You think to yourself, God, I've ruined this. But, but perseverance... And the, the 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 washes afterwards create a very realistic rock. So I'm especially pleased how they came out. Working with the uh, woodland scene, it's rock moulds and the sculptor mould and the rock ba uh, plaster bandage. I'm very happy. So let's see if we can get a train to go over.
time of filming this, it's the end of October. Next month, I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I think I might be trying to focus uh, on the uh, platforms because I need to get something uh, started there. Uh, as I said, there's a few things I need to do on here uh, it, which aren't going to affect the way it, it operates. Uh, next month is also Worley. Uh, so I'm going down on the 24th, which is a Saturday. Uh, so if you see me there, bump into me, say hello. Uh, I'm not shy. And uh, hopefully I might see some of you there. So until next time, see you soon from Al Nahudi Central.